state's going to do considering they're not doing what they've done? You took the words right out of my yeah. mouth. Yeah, it's been a really weird week because they're, I, I think, with all the injuries that they've had, they've had a tough time establishing the identity that they want to establish. And, um, you know, week one without, uh, without Spencer Sanders and then receivers in and out, tailbacks in and out. It's, it's been a, it's been a challenge to try to, you know, corral. We're going to have to be uh, very, very sharp within the game. Looks like they found a tailback though. They got a stable of tailbacks. Yeah. I, I tell you what, I'm very impressed with how those guys run, how they keep their feet moving, how they run through contact, the, the vision that they have. Those guys are excellent, excellent players. What do you like most about your run defense? Um, I think the attitude that we're starting to develop with it is uh, our, our guys are, are doing a good job of not allowing themselves to be blocked, uh, of staying alive, of, of uh, we use the term changing the math. Sometimes uh, when you get things drawn up offensively, you can maybe get a hat on a hat, and, and sometimes it takes somebody with a with a superhuman effort to, to change the math, so to speak, on the on the grease board, and, and uh, we're doing that by and large with a lot of guys. When replacing Khalid Duke, is it as simple as Nate Matlax the next guy up, or will we see someone different? Well, Khalid's been in, in so many roles for us. I mean, we've used him as a linebacker. We've used him as a defensive end. So it's going to be replacement by committee. It's going to be Nate Matlack to a degree, Spencer Trussell to a degree uh, uh, when it comes to the defensive end stuff. It's going to be Ryan Hennington, Wayne Jones when it comes to some of the linebacker stuff. And they've been doing that, so I feel comfortable with all of those guys. What do you see as the key to success between the 3-4 and the 4-3 that you guys are using this year? Key to success uh, in terms of when we're using it? Oh, yeah, alternating and keeping them off, throwing them off. Uh, I mean, I think everything comes down to situational football. I mean, I think that's the, that's the bottom line. And, and that, you know, everything we look at throughout the week is just situations and how we want to play those situations and what personnel gives us the best chance in those situations. This three-man front. Three, three, five. Was designed because of the spread offenses. And yet your run defense has been really good. Explain how that works to me. Um, well, at the end of the day, it's all a numbers game. Yeah. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're just trying to outnumber them at, at the point of attack with with uh, what everything that we're doing, run game or pass game. And um, sometimes the presentation can look a little bit different in in some of the three down stuff. And gives you a lot more flexibility than uh, to look different ways than, than the four down stuff does when you have to kind of tilt your hand a little bit. And that was that was the main uh, idea behind it. And it was designed for the RPO teams. And um, you know, next thing you know, a guy raises up and throws an RPO glance into somebody that's standing right there in the glance window. And that's what uh, um, you know that, that scares some teams into making them a little bit more one dimensional and, and forcing them to run the football. And, and now we can tee off on that. How valuable was Stubblefield's play on Saturday? Reggie's been awesome. Reggie had a uh, had a dynamite week um, of preparation. We knew he was going to play a lot. Uh, we we made the decision to to use him as the uh, Sam linebacker uh, so that we could play a little bit more man and do some different things with him against a team that we thought was going to throw the ball a little bit more. But he's very comfortable in the box. He's very good as a blitzer. Um, he, you know, the more he learns and the more he gets around here, he's going to be a bigger and bigger impact as the season goes on. Can you kind of talk about? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Can you kind of talk about Spencer Sanders and the challenges he presents? Wow, I mean, he, you know, for years he's been he's been a guy that's been uh, giving guys like me headaches. Just keeping plays alive. He's got a good arm. Um, you know, he's been in this system. He understands what he's doing. Um, and they're intelligent in how they use him. And I think that they're going to have to run him a little bit. I think we're. Uh, gearing up for that as much as we can, but you know, it's, sometimes it's the non-designed runs that give you the most fits. The quarterback scrambles, the the draws when they spread you out, those kind of things that uh, um, you know that, that keep you up at night. Because he's a, he's a difficult guy to get his hands on. He's a strong runner, um, and he can beat you in so many ways. And I, I, I yeah, I mean, he's he, he's the deal. Cody had mentioned uh, Cody Fletcher had mentioned that. Um, kind of pausing the video and counting the hats at the end of a tackle. How many hats do you want to see when you freeze the tape? 11. <laughs> Short answer, 11. I mean, that, yeah, that's it. I mean, it, it's, that's the mentality we're trying to, trying, to, trying to get established. If you don't have 11, does that mean extra running for the defense? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something that we emphasize throughout, uh, and seriously, we emphasize throughout spring and throughout fall camp uh, to try to get that mentality. And, um, you know, I think guys take pride in that right now. And when you look at some of the effort plays that we've made, I'll give you an example. The Jalen Pickle interception uh, a couple of weeks ago. That was one of the best plays uh, I've ever seen for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's just the intelligence of Ryan Hankton, get that ball up in the air and keep it alive. But 
Jalen Pickle just being in the vicinity, a defensive tackle being out on the numbers to make that play. Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen when guys are standing around watching the game. You know, it happens when guys are screaming at the football, and that's what makes it really cool. How valuable is Ryan Hennington? He starts off offense, secondary, moves up to linebacker, and it looks like you've used him in a different linebacker role a little bit. Yeah, he's been in the box. He's been out of the box. Um, you know, we use him sometimes differently on third down. Um, because he can flat run, you know, he's smart enough and cares enough to, to learn a bunch of different spots. And, you know, he, he, he can athletically do a lot of things. I mean, he's a guy that can play man coverage if we need to, you know, he's done that stuff before. And so, you know, really we used him and Reggie a little bit last week interchangeably, you know, and, and we weren't afraid, uh, sorry, we weren't afraid to play some man when, uh, when he was out there, uh, whether it was tight ends or receivers. And so uh, his versatility makes us better. How did you react to the excessive celebration penalty? <laughs> I don't know. I think I was excessively celebrating at the same time, so I don't know if I saw it. Um, it, it it's it, <laughs> we want our guys to have fun. You know, we want our guys to set an NCAA record for fun playing football. And uh, um, but in the same time, we've got to be intelligent about how we're doing it. You know, that was uh, is this in the National Football League? You know, we can't run over there and 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 carry on. So from now on, we're going to have that same amount of fun, but we're going to do it on our sideline where uh, where where it's safe. How do you teach something in practice where there's the fine line between celebrating and not doing it excessively? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I think when, when guys are, are celebrating together, I think it's a great thing. I think when guys are individually kind of making a spectacle of themselves, I, I don't know if that's uh, what college football is about. T obviously had the interception. What, what are you seeing out of him right now in his, T, his T, moment? T's been awesome. T's been uh, getting better and better. As he gets more and more confidence, he's going to play a lot more. Um, he, his, his technique has been good. His physicality is so much improved. Uh, his understanding has always been very good. He's a super intelligent football player. So, um, you know, he, uh, I'm glad we've got him for a long time to come here. How big of a fan is Joe Klingerman of the transfer portal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, got, I got a couple of different opinions on that. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's been good for us. And, and I think the, the reason that it's been good for us is because is Coach Klein is such a good judge of character. And I think, um, you know, it's good and bad to that. You know, I mean, there, I'm sure there's some people that uh, had some transfers uh, that they picked up that are just now rearing their ugly heads uh, of maybe their true identity. And I, I think the true identity of our guys is they're superb people and uh, they make us a lot better in the locker room and on the field. Brennan Presley was once a standout at camp for you guys. Now he's one of their best players. Gave you some issues last year. Just what, what do you think about him and what he does for them? They're going to use him all over the place. I mean, he's a, a guy that's going to uh, get a number of touches. He's a difficult guy to, to get your hands on in, in man. He's got speed, I think, to, to get uh, over the top of you. Reminds me a lot of, of Phillip Brooks and what, what he does for our offense. Um, you know, obviously he had a had a play a year ago that uh, we missed him in the backfield for uh, uh, what I guess ultimately was the, the winning touchdown. Um, and, you know, we're going to have to try to throw a lot of people around him. Have you not played a road game? How do you guys, how do you get your guys ready to go for the uh, hostile Stillwater environment? You just go, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that our guys are so focused on the task at hand and just executing their stuff, their stuff one play at a time that, you know, it can be in, Hell, you know, it doesn't matter, and they're and just uh, uh, we're gonna go out there and, and try to do our thing. It appears you've gotten through three games without exposing too much of your coach packages. Is that in fact the case? Yeah, again, situational football. I mean, it's gonna dictate what we do and, and how we do it, and and uh, I think we've got a lot of a lot of stuff in the cachet. If that's what you're asking, we do. We talked to a couple of the teammates the other, the other day. Uh, they just said Khalid was really was really down. Has he gone on? Has he gotten a little bit better? He has. Super yeah, tough. and Khalid's uh, so good as a teammate. Um, obviously uh, upset just because he cares and wants to be out there and wants to help us. But he's he is um, yeah. I mean he understands the situation that he's in. You know, don't enjoy it, but he understands it. And you know he's going to work to get back. And I think he's seeing the success of guys like T.J. Smith uh, that have had that similar type of thing and uh, are now uh, back performing at a high level and I think that's the goal for him. Right.